Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Advancing Adventism. Now, people sometimes ask us why we're covering what the early pioneers had to say on our SDA pillar doctrines rather than just covering what Ellen White had to say. And uh, we thought, you know, this is a valid question. So it deserves having its own independent video addressing it so that um, we can share that with people who may have this concern. Now, for some people who do ask us about this, they're concerned that we're putting too much weight on what the pioneers had to say, um, almost as though we're viewing them as just being right on everything that they taught. And some have even argued against some of the things we've quoted from the pioneers by saying something like, well, the pioneers aren't infallible, as though we were viewing them or quoting from them to be uh, an infallible authoritative source. But that's not at all our position. And uh, we don't think that they were right on absolutely everything that they taught, which is pretty obvious from the fact that they actually taught differently from one another on certain things that they addressed in their, their articles and that sort of thing. But this doesn't mean that the writings don't have any value. And what we're going to cover in this video are things from Ellen White herself, wherein she not only shows that she endorsed the writings of the early pioneers on our fundamental teachings, you know, the pillars of our faith in particular. Um, but she explains why she did so. And the reason that we share what we do from the writings of the pioneers is for the same reason that Ellen White um, gave for why she endorsed the writings of the pioneers. So in this video, we're going to be looking at statements from Ellen White, where she explains why she endorsed the early pioneers' writings on the pillars of our faith. Now, let's start with this one, and it may be familiar to some of you, but it's just really great to encapsulate the fact that she did endorse the writings of the pioneers on the pillars of our faith. She says, when men come in who would move one pin or pillar from the foundation, which God has established by his Holy Spirit, let the aged men who were pioneers in our work speak plainly and let those who are dead speak also by reprinting of their articles in our periodicals. So, of course, she made the statement in 1905 and some of the very early pioneers were still alive to speak up when uh, people would come into the movement who would... Um, try to present new theories that would move the pillars of our faith. And so she was not only endorsing some of what the living pioneers at that time would have said about our foundational pillars, but even those who had already died by 1905, she was calling for the reprinting of their articles, particularly on the pillars of our faith. So that's a pretty straightforward um, statement, just at least showing that she did endorse the writings of the early pioneers on the pillars. Here's another statement where she says, I have had presentations regarding the deceptions that Satan is bringing in at this time. I have been instructed that we should make prominent the testimony of some of the old workers who are now dead. Let them continue to speak through their articles as found in the early numbers of our papers. These articles should now be reprinted that there may be a living voice from the Lord's witnesses. Okay, so now from this statement, we can see that she received instructions. And of course, we all know that that would be that she received those instructions from God. Um, but we'll see other statements that make that really overt. But she received instructions that not only that we should have you know, the early pioneers writings reprinted, but that they should be made prominent, right? She says, I have been instructed that we should make prominent the testimony of some of the old workers who are now dead. And she points particularly to the earliest writings, you know, the, the stuff that was found in the early numbers of their papers, that they should be reprinted. And one of the reasons, or at least the reason that she mentions here on this slide, is so that there may be a living voice from the Lord's witnesses. So those early pioneers were actually witnessing for God to the truth of the pillars of our faith. All right. Now, here's another statement, and in this one, it's very overt that she received this instruction from God. 
She says, God has given me light regarding our periodicals. What is it? He has said that the dead are to speak. How? Their works shall follow them. We are to repeat the words of the pioneers in our work who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure and who labored to lay the foundation of our work. They moved forward step by step under the influence of the Spirit of God. One by one, these pioneers are passing away. The word given me is, let that which these men have written in the past be reproduced. Okay, so here we have some more very clear statements from Ellen White that it was God himself who instructed her that these early articles written by the pioneers who labored to lay the foundation of our work should be reproduced. They should be repeated. We are to repeat the words of the pioneers in our work, the ones who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure. So there is another very plain and straightforward statement. And here's another one where she says, I have been pleading with the Lord for strength and wisdom to reproduce the writings of the witnesses who were confirmed in the faith in the early history of the message. After the passing of the time in 1844, they received the light and walked in the light. When the power of God testifies as to what is truth, that truth is to stand forever as the truth. No after suppositions, contrary to the light God has given, are to be entertained. Okay, now from this statement, again, we see that she's saying that she needs to be reproducing the writings, that we need to be repeating what the early pioneers wrote because they are witnesses and they were confirmed in the faith in the early history of the message. She even says that, you know, after the passing of the time in 1844, and that was when she was first called to bear her message and she was first receiving divine revelation on these um, doctrinal points that she then passed on to the early pioneers who were trying so hard to understand what the scriptures taught on various fundamental truths that, you know, have become pillars of our faith. And she says that they received the light that she received, you know, she received the light, she passed it on to them, they received the light, and they walked in the light. Now, those are really important um, in, you know, points of endorsement. And another really important point to notice from this statement is that she says, when the power of God testifies as to what is truth, that truth is to stand forever as a truth. Now, obviously, God doesn't tell us all the truth all at once. But when God gives us truth, when divine revelation on a point is provided, what she's saying here is that that is to stand forever as a truth. Well, I'm, but that makes sense, right? I mean, God's not going to tell us this is the truth and it's not the truth. If God gives us truth, things that are supposed to be foundational pillar doctrines of our message and movement, they should stand forever as a truth. Now, the last sentence in this uh, quote, where she says, no after suppositions contrary to the light God has given are to be entertained. That's a really important um, statement, and it has some implications there. One of the implications is that in order to be sure that we aren't entertaining um, these after suppositions that would be contrary to the light God already gave, well, we need to understand for sure what the light was that God already gave. And as she's pointed to um, that we've seen more than once, the early pioneers who labored to lay the foundation of our work, they understood what these pillar doctrines were. They are the Lord's witnesses as to what the pillars of our faith are. Now, in this statement, it's a series of, I think, four slides to come. And it's taken from a sermon that Ellen White delivered at the St. Helena Sanitarium Chapel. So that's in California. And in California, uh, two of the early uh, SDA ministers who kind of pioneered the work in that state 
are Jay and Loughborough, along with D.T. Bordeaux. The two of them went together and they labored there. They weren't the very, very first ones who went to California, but they were very early on. And um, Jay and Loughborough ended up actually holding the conference president position for a few terms in California. So, you know, he people in California were familiar with Jay and Loughborough in particular. And when Ellen White was there in 1906, giving a sermon one Sabbath, she told him something that is really relevant to what we're covering here today. So let's take a look over these next four slides at what she says. She tells the congregation, we are on the very same foundation. We have the same evidence and we worked on it day and night to know in regard to the sanctuary question and in regard to the personality of God and of Christ and of all these subjects. Now, before we move on, let's just take note of the fact that some of the key things here that she's saying is that they're supposed to be on the same foundation, right? She's like, we are on the very same foundation. We have the same evidence. So the same evidence as in the early days. They worked on it day and night to know in regard to, and then she lists three particular pillar doctrines, the sanctuary doctrine or the sanctuary question, she says, the personality of God and the personality of Christ and of all these subjects. And then she just says it more broadly. Then she goes on, and I'm not skipping anything in the sermon. Um, as you can find, I'll have the link in the description as well, where you can go and read the full sermon on the Ellen White website. But here she continues and she says, there were only a few of us, but we would get together and we would begin in the early evening and work through the truth. And then they would get to the point, we cannot handle that. We must give it up. We can't handle it. And if you've ever been really struggling to just study and try to understand what certain, you know, scriptural things are teaching, sometimes it can be like, okay, got to have a break. This is, yeah, it, it can be really taxing on the mind to do that, but it's, it's an excellent exercise and it's something important. We should be really digging deeply to know and understand scriptural truth. So anyway, then she goes on and she says, the power of God came upon me then. So at the point where they said, okay, we have to give this up. We can't handle it. Right? So the power of God came upon me then and light was reflected through the frail instrument and it was brought out clearly. So there she's relating how they would be studying hard, trying to understand these points. They'd get to the point that they just don't know. They just are about to give up because they just can't handle it. It's too much right now. But then she would be taken into vision and light would be reflected through her and brought out clearly. She says, again and again, and over and over, as it was opposed, there substantiated every species of doctrine that we had been holding. Now, you see, it is not possible for us to let go of this and take hold of some of these new suppositions and fallacies. We cannot do it. And I mean to present before the people how God has wrought. You have listened to Elder Loughborough. He was with us from almost the first of our work, and he knows and he understands these things and others understand them. So here we have Ellen White addressing a congregation who knew who Jay and Loughborough was. They knew him. He had been their conference president for you know however many years. And she's just reminding them, like, he was with us from almost the first of our work. He knows, he understands these things. The, what, what are these things? Well, she had just mentioned the sanctuary question, the personality of God, the personality of Christ, and all these subjects, right? So the, the foundation teachings of Seventh-day Adventism. She names him specifically. He understands these things, but she says, and others understand them. Okay, so who were some of the others? Well, even though the pictures you see on the screen right now is just a super small sampling of who else was involved in the early days of the movement. We can see that when she says Jan Loughborough was with us from almost the first um, of our work, well, he joined the Seventh-day Adventist movement in 1852. So she's viewing 1852 as 
the very early days, the days of laying down the foundation of establishing these pillar doctrines. And she says he was there with us from pretty much the first. But then notice these other guys. So just to his left, if you're looking at the slide there, um, that's J.H. Wagner. He joined the Seventh-day Adventist movement in 1852 as well. So he was there from the first. And then on the top left, you have uh, William Ingram. He joined a year before that in 1851, as did R.F. Cottrell, Roswell Fenner Cottrell, who uh, also joined in 1851. Now, the three in the middle, of course, we see Ellen White in the very center. Um, to our right would be her husband, James White. And to our left, as you're looking at the screen, it would be, of course, Joseph Bates. And they were the three, you know, foundational pioneers, the founders, basically, of Seventh-day Adventism. And there were many others who, I mean, not many compared to our numbers today, right? But um, there were more than what I have listed here, but that's just a small sampling. Okay, but notice what she says in regard to some more specific people um, who knew and understood what the pillars of our faith are. And uh, okay, so here she says, my husband, Elder Joseph Bates, Father Pierce, and that's that would be Stephen Pierce, Elder Edson, and that's referring to Hiram Edson, the, the one who had the vision of the sanctuary service of, you know, what happened on October 22, 1844. And then she says, and many others who were keen, noble, and true were among those who, after the passing of the time in 1844, searched for truth. Now, of course, now here she doesn't name J.N. Loughborough in particular, but we know that she's including him as one of the many others who were keen, noble, and true because we just saw in another statement where she names him specifically. Of course, she's doing that in that instance because she's talking to people who she knows they know who J.N. Loughborough is. They've listened to him and all that. But anyway, so here we have a few more people specifically named. But then, you know, again, she says, and there were many others. It wasn't just these who were named. Um, they were part of those who, after October 22, 1844, were really searching for the truth. Then she, further on, she says, I would be taken off in vision and a clear explanation of the passages we had been studying would be given me with instruction as to the position we were to take regarding truth and duty. So here we see she's describing again um, how the pillars of our faith were established. It was through group studying to the point where they couldn't make any more progress without divine revelation. And then she would be um, taken into vision and given a clear explanation of the passages that they had been studying and also the position that they as a, a people were to take regarding truth and duty. And then she says that those who were there studying, you know, she says they accepted as light direct from heaven the revelations given me. Thus, the leading points of our faith as we hold them today were firmly established. Now, she made the statement in 1903. So let's just keep everything in perspective. And that's what she's saying from, from 1903. The leading points of our faith as we hold them today were firmly established. Point after point was clearly defined and all the brethren came into harmony. The whole company of believers were united in the truth. So look at this. We have her repeated testimony that the early pioneers, those who after 1844, even, you know, we see as late as 1852, she specifically mentions that that was almost the very beginning of their work, the way she describes it, and that these early pioneers accepted the light that she was given from God, and that that's how our pillar doctrines were established. So those people who were part of the movement in the early days, the early pioneers, they all came into harmony on these pillar doctrines. The whole company of believers were united in the truth. That's what she's saying. So why did Ellen White endorse the writings of the pioneers, uh, particularly on the pillars of our faith? Because God told her to. 
And why did God tell her to do that? Because their writings are a witness to what the pillars of our faith are. Thank you for watching, and I hope that this has helped to put things into perspective as to why the writings of the early pioneers on the pillars of our faith in particular are very important to include in our studies as we seek to make sure that we are standing on the actual foundation and pillars of our SDA faith. Thank you very much for joining us and many blessings.